Hello, today we're demonstrating the use of the Dynanite PIP implant for hammer toe correction. This comes in a sterile kit ready to, to go in the OR, which includes everything from the guide wires, a couple of different sizes of drills, the implant with the inserter, and also a toe tam. So we'll demonstrate how this is uh, used for you today. Typically when addressing a second toe at the PIP, I do a longitudinal incision and I often have to extend that to the MTP level for other pathology. For today we'll keep this isolated to a second toe correction so I do longitudinal and we make an incision on the dorsal aspect longitudinally preserving the extensor tendon underlying and we'll close that at the end. And then I usually flex the toe to identify exactly where the joint is. I usually come a little more distal as I incise through the extensor tendon apparatus and then I'll reflect off the collateral a little bit on the, each side and establish a small flap dorsally of the extensor tendon. With this implant you can resect the joint however you prefer using a saw, a couple of skin hooks to protect the skin. You can use a ronger or a bone cutter. Up to your surgeon preference for joint resection. I'll use a saw today. Next we use a guide wire which is a 1.1 and we like to make sure this is going right down the proximal phalanx. It usually will find its own path. The drill is a 3.0 millimeter drill cannulated to go over the guide wire. It does have a laser line to let you know how far you need to drill into the proximal phalanx. And in soft bone, I just go nice and slow and work our way down to the laser line. Remove the K-wire if it doesn't come out on its own, and now we would move to the middle phalanx. Using the same guide wire, center this in the middle phalanx, and we are going to extend this out the end of the toe. This is a 2.5 millimeter drill. Again, soft bone, I usually go nice and slow and bottom it out to the laser line. The implant comes with an inserter. The implant you can remove. And if you use the seven degree angled or the bent, um, there is a specific direction this needs to be inserted for it to go into the bone straight. So there's the, the angle. This is a 14. They come in 12, 14, and 16. And that's basically the length. And as they get longer, they get a little bit uh, wider. So the inserter comes over the guide wire. And we insert this into the middle phalanx. You can put this down flush to bone. And these threads are very aggressive to help prevent pull off. So we want this to end with the flat spot at the top facing up dorsally, especially when using the, the angled implant. And that will assure us that we have the correct amount of, of plantar flexion or angulation. So there's the, the flat spot. I'm going to bring it back just a little bit more. Then we take this off. As you can see, the guide wire is bringing the barbs apart. So we're going to back up the guide wire to allow the barbs to come together for insertion. And then we have the option of advancing it back if, if so desired. At this point, I like to hold the shaft of the proximal phalanx uh, using an instrument. And with the guide wire retracted, the barbs can come together and be inserted. And then you have the option adva of advancing the guide wire back and springing apart the, the barbs within the bone. Now we're going to use the toe tamp, which at this point we want to make sure that the implant is well seated. So we're going to lightly impact here. I'll hold on the, the far side, on the proximal phalanx, and then the assistant will go ahead and apply some gentle tapping to bring the uh, fusion site together. And then we'll confirm that under floral. So at this point, the key here is to make sure that the barbs have fully inserted into the proximal phalanx and that they're capturing the bone. If not, you can use the toe tamp to make sure that the fusion has been well seated. You now have a couple options. You can remove the K-wire, or if you want to bring it uh, further down towards the base of the phalanx for additional stability, that will push the barbs further up against the cortical bone inside the phalanx, and you'll have a lot of stability. You also can advance it even further across the MTP if you desire for other pathology. In this particular case, I'm going to remove the wire, and the implant holds very nicely, the toe in the corrected straight position with a little slight seven degree angulation. Final floral x-rays confirm the joint has come together. We have good apposition. The implant's well centered with uh, excellent stability. We haven't gone too far distally breaching the DIP joint and uh, overall alignment looks great. So the patient will be very satisfied with this. Um, we'll go ahead and allow immediate weight bearing in a post-operative shoe. And uh, after about four to six weeks, once I see bony consolidation across the fusion side, we'll go ahead and advance back to regular shoes as tolerated.